Okay, so there's three types of systems. We have lakes, we have rivers and streams, and then wetlands. Okay, so lakes are bodies of water that are completely still. Rivers and streams are characterized by moving water. Um, it's a stream if it's less than two meters deep. It's a river if it's more than two meters deep. Um, so you have tributaries and river sources, usually up in the mountains of an area. So this is a tributary to the Eno River. A tributary is just a smaller creek or stream that feeds into a larger body of water. Um, a lot of tributaries that feed into one large body of water we call a watershed. Um, and then you have the main channel, and then you have the riverbank or floodplain, which is actually more of a wetland than a river. And then at the very bottom you have the mouth of the river or the delta. A wetland has a water table that is less than 12 inches below the surface of the ground, so the soil must be saturated. It must have hydrophytic vegetation, which is just vegetation that is adapted to living with its roots wet. And hydric soils, which just means soils that have formed while the ground was flooded. So those are our three types of aquatic ecosystems. Precipitation can do either one of two or three things after it falls. So it can become runoff and go into surface water, which is what we're going to talk about now. Um, it can become, infiltrate into the ground and become groundwater. Or if it falls as ice and snow, then it can get stuck at the top of mountains as snow pack or ice pack. All right, so um, if our incoming precipitation is really, really heavy, that's gonna influence the volume of our surface waters. So obviously if you dump a whole lot of water into a lake or river, the water level's gonna rise. You're gonna get more volume. If you only dump a little tiny bit of water into it, you know, the water level might not rise so much. And if you don't have any rain for a very long period of time, no precipitation, your stream or your lake or your river might start to, you know, get really small in volume. Um, and then, so if we have more precipitation, we have more water in the surface water. So this could be associated with cold fronts or really long-term stationary fronts because cold fronts dump a whole lot of water at one time or stationary fronts stick around for a very long time and dump small amounts of water. Um, and then if we have less precipitation down at this end of the spectrum, then we have less water added to our surface water. Um, so this would be associated with like high pressure weather systems um, because high pressure is associated with clear skies. The second thing that can affect surface water flow and volume is the permeability of the ground. So permeability um, is the ability of liquids to pass through something. So if we have something like a parking lot or um, hard clays or solid rocks, they're very low in permeability. So water cannot pass through them. So it's just gonna run straight down and into the stream and we're gonna have higher surface water volumes in these situations when it rains. Um, if you have a more permeable ground cover, like something that's covered with vegetation or sandy soils, um, then that water is actually going to be able to infiltrate into the soil very easily. And so it's going to get soaked up in the soil before it gets to the river. So this, the surface water is actually going to remain pretty constant in its flow or volume. Okay. So the third thing that affects surface um, water flow is the slope of the ground or terrain. So if we have really steep mountains, obviously that water is going to be influenced more by gravity and it's going to run down those mountains really fast. Um, and we're going to get a larger volume in our surface water, so in our stream or our lake. If the slope is really 
low, then gravity doesn't have much effect, and so the water is just going to kind of trickle on down into the stream, and your stream size is going to stay pretty constant even with rain events. So here you're going to get a pretty spiked increase um, with rain events, and then here we have a pretty constant uh, water flow with, even with rain events. And then the fourth thing that influences um, surface water flow is the connectivity with the groundwater, so groundwater connectivity. So we can have two options. We can have a gaining stream. So that means that groundwater is actually flowing from the ground into the stream. Or we can have a losing stream, which means that the surface water from the stream or the lake is actually going down and infiltrating into the groundwater. Um, and you can also have a situation where there is no connection with the groundwater and the surface water. In that case, we just don't even consider this. We just consider the first three things.